Great. Um, yes. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, today, it's a pleasure to introduce Bill Graham from the uh, University of Georgia, who will be speaking about pavings of generalized spring of fibers. Well, thank you for the invitation. Uh, this is actually a nice seminar, and I only learned about it rather recently. And uh, I, uh, as I said, unfortunately, it conflicts with one of our seminars here, but I'll need that maybe we have to sort of figure out some way to deal with that. Anyway, let me let me um, share my screen, and then I can. Except I need to be made a host or something to share, because only the host can share. Oh, um, can I do that? Uh, let's see, participants. Doing it right now. I'm doing it right now. Okay, good. Okay, now I'm a co-host. Let me try to share again. Let's see if that works. It still says only the host can share. Do, do you have two? Let's see. Oh, iPad. iPad. Uh, yeah, iPad needs to. Yeah, sorry. That's yes. That's right. You know, let me try. Okay, so, so today what I'm going to talk about, and I'll, as, as I guess you know, I said, is, you know, pavings. Of generalized Springer fibers. And what's new in this talk will be Will be jo is joint work with um, Amber Russell and Martha Precup. So, so okay. So let me begin with a. Of course, many, I'm sure many of you know what I'm going to start off talking about, but let me, I want to begin by talking about the Springer resolution and Springer fibers. So, so in this setup, as usual, I mean, I, I hesitate to write down all the notation. We will have, as usual, G will contain, B will contain T, and it will also contain or maybe I'll say B equals T times U. So I so in this seminar, I probably don't want to waste too much time to tell you what these things are, but of course, this is in, in this context, however, I will say this is complex, semi-simple. This is of course a Borel and a maximal torus and a maximal unipotent, unipotent radical. And then the Lie algebra is G B U. Here are the Lie algebras. I'm going to let you now. So, this, so I'm always working over C here. That's actually not really essential, I don't think. But let's just do that anyway. I'm I'm going to let Z be the the center of G. Now, the main example in this talk will be that will be just G equals S L N. So it will be in the type A situation. Although a certain amount, I mean, at the very start of the talk, especially, everything works for all types. But then as I go to some of the more combinatorial stuff, that's only worked out so far, at least for type A. But at it, it, the start, this, of course, is, is completely general. So most of you probably know <clears throat> the Springer resolution is, is you take, I'll, I'll write it this way, and tilde, it's, I can, I'll write it as G cross upper B with U. And this maps down to, so this maps down to N, which is the set of nil potent, it's the nil potent cone in G. So it's the set of nil potent elements in the Lie algebra G, and that's of course just by the action map. I'll just write it as g, g dot x. We'll call this mu for the moment. And then there's also the map to the to b, which is the flag variety, which is g mod 
B. And that's isomorphic, of course, to the set of B1, where B1 is a Borel subalgebra. And so then, given X and N, The inverse image, mu inverse of x, I'll, I'll call it for the moment, I'll maybe call it a couple of things in this talk. Let me call it for the moment, I'll call it n tilde x is called the Springer fiber. And it's often identified with its image. Bx in, in, in B, and then in fact, Bx can be just is then can be identified with the set of Borel subalgebras B1 such that B1 contains X. So, probably most of you know this already, but and so then, of course, in, in type A, as again, I think most of most people know right now. So, in type A. G orbits on N, in other words, no potent orbits, are just in bijection with partitions lambda of N. And so we can choose, you know, X lambda in the orbit. Of, so X lambda would always denote here some element in the orbit of lambda corresponding to lambda, and then we can form you know, say, I don't know, B X lambda or something like that. Okay. Four. So Usually people talk about Bx lambda and not n tilde of x lambda, but for reasons that will become clear, we, you know, we really want to talk about n tilde of x lambda sometimes. And so, so, that, so of course, uh, uh, let me recall a definition that again, I feel like most people in this audience are probably familiar with, but a paving by affines you know, of a variety or reduced scheme. M is a filtration by closed subvarieties, you know, M0 contained in M1. Such that MI less MI minus one is a disjoint union of varieties isomorphic to the C R. Not all of the same dimension. I mean, this R could be area, but I'm not going to. Let me not try and introduce any, any more complicated notations. So we could have multiple varieties that could have different dimensions. Now, in this talk, actually, what we're going to be, we're not, we're going to need to consider pavings by things that are not just CR. So, so I'm going to still call, I'm going to consider a little later in this talk, we'll also consider by, I'll say, CR mod a finite abelian group. And we'll still call this a paving by affines. So maybe you can call it, if you want to call it, you could call it an orbit paving or a quasi paving or something like this. So this is, this is the same definition as above, except that I'm not going to be able to quite get my piece, the pieces of my varieties isomorphic to CR. They're only going to be isomorphic to CR mod a finite abelian group. And so 
you, if you, as I said, if you want to eat, I don't know what to call them. So for the purposes of this talk, maybe we'll call them orbit pavings. Anyway. So the theorem that sort of gets the ball rolling is that, and I, I, I'm not actually sure who this is due to. It might, I mean, it might be Spaltenstein or, or Steinberg. Is that, I mean, I know Spaltenstein has done, did a number of things related to this, and it, I'm pretty sure he's one of the names associated to this, but I'm not sure that he's the only one. I think Steinberg also had done this. But the theorem is that, is that, is that the Springer fiber BX has a paving by affines. And so this is nice for several reasons. One is it enables you to compute the Betty numbers. Another is it tells you something about the vanishing of odd cohomology groups, which is useful for various reasons. So because it's going to appear in later in my talk, let me give you some a little bit of details about how sort of the combinatorics of this paving. So, so but the, the, the details I'm going to give are not, I believe, the way Spaltenstein originally did it. So the way what I'm going to describe is, is taken from a paper by Caleb G and, and Martha Precup, but they were dealing actually with Hessenberg varieties of certain types of which Springer fibers were an example. And I think for Springer fibers, the, their construction was, was basically in some work of Tomas code. So I don't really want to try and you know, get the references right, but But I think, anyway, I think that's, that's as far as I know about the situation. But let me just try and explain this sort of, you know, briefly. So what I want to do is I want to, I want to start off with the tableau on out of shape lambda. So start off, so some, some notation having to do with, with tableau of shape lambda. And I'll just, and I'll just, I'll just basically illustrate this kind of with some example or some pictures. So let me start off with some tableau of shape lambda and let me just draw one here sort of you know, not too systematically. So I'll call this tableau sigma and then I'm going to give this another name on it, but that's this tableau sigma. And I want to start off with a tableau of the same shape, which I fill in this kind of, you know, this filling order. So if you have to watch this part of the talk is, well, you don't really have to watch, but I mean, the filling order is just basically, I'm going to fill in this by starting from the bottom and going up and going from left to right. Okay. And so then what I can do is to, to this, to the tableau sigma, I can associate a permutation, which for reasons, you know, slightly mysterious, maybe I'm going to call, there's a permutation here, which I can call W inverse. So W inverse in this picture will be take the permutation that takes W inverse of one is three, because the three is in the box where one was, W inverse of two is one, et cetera. Okay, so that's, and then I'm going to call sigma I'm going to give sigma a name depending on this permutation. It's going to, I'm going to call it R of W. Okay. So that so so then you know basically, obviously, permutations are going to be in bijection for with uh, these tableau on this shape, you know, just because I can fill in the numbers any way I want. And then in this setup, you know, the inversions, they're actually inversions of W inverse. You know, are in bijection with pairs k and l, where k is bigger than l, and k comes before l in the filling order.
for periods of such, what's I say? No, in R and W. So for example, three one is a is an inversion here because three comes before one in the filling order, but you know three four is not an inversion. Now the the the, the this the, the number of inversions. It's the dimension of the Schubert cell. Let's call it x w zero, which is b dot w b in the flag variety. So now the the interest. So what's so this of course is all you know very well known. But maybe what's a little bit less well known, but I think is very nice, is that the intersection. So I let's say I, I should say you have to choose, you know, x lambda thoughtfully. So I won't, let me not write down what that is, but but let's just, let's assume you've chosen x lambda thoughtfully. It's actually not too hard to say what it is, but the intersection of x naught of w with the Springer fiber x b of x lambda is non-empty if and only if the tableau sigma equals r of w is row strict, which means increasing along rows. So you notice I, I did write down that's row one that's row strict. And so, so in this case, we can denote the intersection. So call this, so if not empty, call this intersection. C sigma, and then the, the C sigma form the cells of an affine paving of B of X lambda. And then finally, the dimension, I'll just tell you this just to say, just, I mean, everything in this setup can be calculated combinatorially. And so the dimension of C sigma, it's, it's can be calculated in terms of the tableau sigma, and it's the number of K and L pairs such that K is bigger than L and K comes before L in the filling order and if there is an entry R to the right of L, then R and K is less than R. So in our example here, so this is a subset of those inversions that I talked about before, which is what you would expect. The dimension of this intersection is in general going to be smaller than the intersection than the dimension of the Schubert cell. If I go back up to my example here, I can see, for example, that that seven, seven, four is an, well, seven, five is, a, is one of these inversions that gets counted because there's nothing to the right of five. But seven, four doesn't count because even though seven is bigger than four and seven comes before four in the filling order, seven is not less than six in the filling. And so that, that gets excluded. But seven, six is an inversion that's counted in that dimension. So basically we, we, you throw out a certain number of the inversions and you get that. So this is, these are sometimes called, or could be called Springer inversions. They're the ones that count on the, in the dimension. Okay, so. so. There's a question in the chat. Yes. From uh, Edward. 
uh, in Taipei, do you need uh, mod, a finite group? Uh, for not, for, the not, for the, not for these, but for the generalized Springer fibers, you do. So for, for these things, it's, you don't. It's that, so it's only, in fact, you don't need a mod a finite group for any of the Springer fibers. And it's only for these generalized Springer fibers that are, so that was kind of a preview of, uh, of what is to come. Okay, so, so uh, any other questions? Okay, so anyway, hence, you know, PT of the Poincaré polynomial B of x lambda, which I'll, I'm actually just, I'll write it down just because I want to re-index it a little bit. I, wanna, I, mean, I just want to divide by two in my power. So I'll just say it's the dimension of H2I of B of x lambda times T to the I. So I'm just dividing through my exponents. That's just going to be the sum of, so sigma in RST lambda, that means it's a row strict tableau of shape lambda of T to the, you know, the size of lambda. Okay, so that's, anyway, that's just, um, that's the point right point. Okay, so next, I, so next I wanna talk about the, this a generalized Springer resolution. So in general, so N contains a dense orbit, a dense G orbit, I'll call it script O of PR for the, this is the principal or regular no potent orbit. And in fact, N can be realized just in terms of that orbit, it's actually spec of the functions on R of O of P. So that's basically a theorem of constant in a sense. So R, so, so R, it's just the regular algebraic functions on X. So the principal orbit is not simply connected, however. In fact, the fundamental group of the of this is equal to the center, is, or is iso, can be identified with the center of G, if G is simply connected. Which it is in the case of SLN. So, it's natural to look at the variety, the universal cover of the principal no potent orbit. That so this is the universal cover, and then that maps down to OPR, and then sort of sitting in here you have N. Well, you can actually make a variety N here, which is spec of the functions on O tilde the R, and it's a it's sort of a, a result of I guess Berlinski and constant that this that O that this O tilde PR actually sits inside of M here. And so then, so you get this map here and the, the, these maps are actually quotients by, the horizontal maps are quotients by Z. And so, so what you would like, so in, I, no, let me pause for a second. In some ways, the variety M is better than N. In the, at least, here's one way at least in which it's better. If you decompose the functions on o, the principal orbit, you only see inter, as a representation of the group, G, you get it's a direct sum of finite dimensional representations, but you only see the representations whose, whose weights lie in the root lattice. So you don't see all the other representations of G sitting there. Whereas if you look at M, M sees all of the representations of G, not just the ones whose weight slide in the root bias. So at least that's some argument that M is, um, you know, better in some ways than, than, than N. 
So what we would like is that, you know, a resolution So we'd like to have something that's like the Springer resolution. Making this diagram commute. Where the horizontal maps, so what we would like is, you know, the horizontal maps, quotients by Z. And we'd like the, we'd like, We'd also like, since this is going to be a resolution, we'd actually like, you know, M tilde to M to be an isomorphism over OPR. Just because that's that's the, that's what's true in the spring resolution case that M tilde to N is an isomorphism over the over the principal order. And so the theorem is that so. Is that you can construct such a variety in tilde but in fact the best the best until you get is really one which is which is an orbifold rather than actually a you know a, a smooth thing so it's it's not quite a resolution of singularities But it's 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 pretty good, nevertheless. So let me explain briefly how you how you get this because it's it, it's I think it's sort of I mean in the end what I want to do is I want to describe so maybe before I tell you a little bit about how you get this the goal of this so that, so our ultimate goal will be. Be to describe paving of M tilde x lambda, which will be the inverse image of x lambda under the composition okay so. So, are there any questions? Leonardo instructed me that we should have a brief break at some point. I don't know if we want to have our break now, or I can maybe I'll tell you how to construct this M tilde, and then we can have a brief break if, we're going, if there's going to be a break. But are there any questions at this point? I'll, is it a, no? It's not a fiber square. This is a commutative diagram. So, okay, so. So let's let me explain how you how you can, can how you construct M tilde. So let me just draw some a couple of pictures. So pictures here. So so basically, what I'm going to do is I'll I'll just explain this rather quickly here. U is going to I'll, let me just draw some pictures in type A. So so you will be the say the upper triangular matrices. And it's sort of sitting inside you, I want to look at the part that's sitting right above the diagonal. I'm going to call this part here, I'm going to give this a name, sort of an ugly name. I'll call it V add, script V add. And then there's the stuff that's that's further above the diagonal. Whatever this is, I'm going to call this stuff here. I'll call this u bigger than or equal to four for some reason that I won't explain right now. So the so the stuff right above the diagonal in u is I'm going to give call the name v add, and the rest of the stuff I'm going to call u bigger than or equal to four. So in other more intrinsically, v add it's the span of the simple root spaces. And there's a B equivariant projection.
from u to vn, which I can identify as u mod u bigger than or equal to four. So that u bigger than equal to four is stable under u. So that that shows that, that projection is b invariant, not b equivariant. Now the, the key thing to notice is that V add is an affine torque variety. For the tor for the torus for the adjoint group, which is just T add, which is T mod the center of V. And so an affine torque variety, what, what's the data of an affine torque variety? We can view this as having a couple of kinds of data. It corresponds to the, the character lattice, so Q, which is the root lattice, which is the character lattice of the, of the torus T add. And then there's the real vector space, V, which will be Q, tensor over Z with R. And then the cone, it corresponds to a cone in V generated by the, the simple roots, which, which are elements of Q. So they're elements of V. So an F Find torque variety can be described by basically a cone in this in this vector space V, as well as the lattice of characters of the torus. And so you can make a torque variety <clears throat> for T by keeping the same cone you keep V and the cone the same, but you change the lattice to P, which is the weight lattice. You know, in other words, characters of T. And so then we let so then we, we, we let B, the TU, act on V by having, by having U act trivially. Then we, we, we let U tilde, so I want to, I want to, I want to soup up instead of just souping up V. So what I've done, what I want to do basically is I want, I want to get some space where the center acts faithfully. So to get the space where the center acts faithfully, I mean, I've, I want to replace V add by V. In fact, what I know is that, is that, is that V goes to V mod Z, which is V add. And since these are torque varieties, V contains T and this goes, this is contains T add here. Which is T mod Z. So what I've done here is I've I want to I want to create a variety U tilde where I replace V add by this space V where the center acts faithfully. But I have to do this in a B equivariant way. So the way I, I can just do this to ensure that it's B equivariant is I just I take V the fiber product here V add of U. So as a space, it's just V cross U bigger than equal to four, but giving that other description that shows that it's B it has a B action. And then I define M tilde equals G cross B of U tilde. And that maps to you know, N tilde, which is G cross B of U. And so then the, the, the thing one has to prove is that this map is that is that M tilde maps onto M, that, which actually requires a little bit of proof. So that's the that's the that, that's the construction there. But let me just say that in fact V is not smooth except in type A1. 
And the reason is that is that if tau is the cone, defining v or v add. Well, if I take tau intersect the lattice q, that's generated by the simple roots, which are on the edges of the cone. And they're in q. But tau intersect p is not generated by elements on the edges of the cone. And the picture in SL3 is something like this. So this is like alpha one and alpha two, and you can form your cone like this. But what you're missing here is that you're missing sort of the fundamental dominant roots, lambda one or lambda two and lambda one. So in so for in SL3, you need four elements to generate the cone. The cone tau intersect p. So that so it's not smooth, but however. V is isomorphic to C of, you know, C to something modulo a finite group. And the reason is that we have, if we, if we just, we can just do the same game with lattices again. If we have V add, V add is just a very simple space. It's just C to the R. And that corresponds to the lattice Q. Well, that we have V that corresponds to, to the lattice P. And what we can do is we could take, I could define some V tilde here and say this corresponds to the lattice one over N times Q. And if I do something like this, then the lattice one over N times Q will be generated by the elements, the simple roots over N. And so this V tilde is just CN. And then this is the, this one here is the quotient by Z. And this is the quotient by by some finite group H. And in fact, what happens is that V tilde mod Z to the, uh, you know, Z to the R or something like this is, is isomorphic to V add and V tilde mod some subgroup H is isomorphic to V where H is the subgroup of, of, uh, Z, of the center to the R and then Actually, what happens is I guess is the center to the R mod H is, is isomorphic is equal to Z. So that's the sizes of things. So H is like that co dimension one subgroup. Okay, so maybe I will, I can take a break now. Sorry about having our break a little after the halfway point, but maybe I'll stop and if there are questions or otherwise we can just take a break for a couple of minutes. Okay, thanks very much. Any questions?